Hello, everybody, Viking fans. This is ViCast. It's a Viking thing. You're listening to Amy Bailey and Clive Standen and... This week, we have Athelstan himself, George Blagden. Athelstan the monk, the way into the Viking culture for all of us, the viewers at home watching. He also becomes so valuable to Ragnar and King Egbert. And we got George Blagden. So, hey, how you doing, bud? Hi, I'm very good, thanks. I'm very, very good. First time I've had headphones on for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a while since we've been able to see you as well. I mean, it's um, how many years has it been since Vikings started? It's about seven years now, I think, since our first few days on set. I know. Yeah, don't. I, um, I, I got terrified yesterday. Someone said to me yesterday that we started filming season one nine years ago. What? Nine years yeah, ago. I think it was in May. Film. It didn't come out for seven yeah. years. But yeah, nine years ago since we probably started. Nine years ago. It, it, was it nine? Yeah, 2012, summer of, um, which is just insane. I mean, yeah. a decade. I, I left, spoiler alert, <laughs> I left the show <laughs> in um, uh, 2014. Beep. Yeah, we'll mute this part. Mute this part. Um, yeah, eight years. Um, eight years? Seven years. So... It's crazy. And, and I've, I've been so amazed at how kind of I, I, it's become more and more popular as the years have gone on. I mean, it, I, you guys both haven't worked on it now for a couple of years as well, right? I mean, yeah. it's been a few years since you both left and it feels like the last couple of years and particularly the last year as well, lots of people have found it in lockdown or found it in the last year. Mm -hmm. And um that's really lovely and really, really nice that it continually seems to find new audience members. You know, it's not something that happened six, seven years ago. It still feels like it's happening now. Are you, are you, are you trying to say that we're all still relevant, George? <laughs> I'm clinging on to relevance <laughs> from nine years ago is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, no, but I like, it, it's lovely, isn't it? It's rare, I guess, that you get to be part of something as an actor where that happens i'm sure you know for a lot of other projects that you've done you've kind of gone in done it and it's had you know a life and then you're kind of like the way that we are mercenaries you move on to your next job and that has a life and you meet a new family that are you know um watching that show and and vikings has just grown and grown and grown and grown and never disappeared it's, it's lovely it's amazing let's go right back to the beginning though because my process for for getting cast is i was i was auditioning for rollo and ragnar and there was loads of vikings you know getting cast through this but there was one thing that uh that when i you know when you get your first round out of the way and you kind of start getting interested in this show vikings and you like you google it you imdb it and you find it and there was one name that was attached to vikings from the very very beginning and that was you george blagden <laughs> cast boom before any vikings were cast and it's because you know, your character is is the eyes inwards to this Viking culture. It was very, very important they found the right guy to play Athelstan. So can you talk us through your casting process and how you auditioned and how you met Michael and, and, and at the very beginning, how it all started for you? Um, it It's fairly undramatic, I'll be honest. I, I auditioned in London, um, would you believe, in a church. Bizarre. It's like an underground church on just off Barclay, uh, not Barclay Square, Bedfield Square. Bedfield Road, Bedfield. It's like right near to Tottenham Court Road. And underground, underneath a hotel, I think in the basement of one of the hotels there, there's like an underground chapel. And Frank Moisel, the casting director, had come over to London to do some tapings with some young British actors. And that's where he was meeting them and taping. And it was, um, it was just that audition. I, I did that one audition and... Uh, a couple of weeks later, they were like, you have the role of Athelstan. And it's, I think, I mean, I, I hear what you say now about how Athelstan is the eyes into this world. But I don't think that Michael had intended that to be the case. I, I, um, <laughs> only because he told me. <laughs> I, he, he intended Athelstan to sort of be a four or five episode arc. Is how he says it to me. I mean, maybe he's being very sort of Michael and trying to <laughs> Hollywood it up. He also told me that Rollo was going to die in episode two because <laughs> I didn't know he was the Duke of Normandy. <laughs> this is the beauty of television is that, you know, you're, it's an ongoing thing. You're not creating a two hour film. You, you, you can 
change you're <laughs> having having started yeah. shooting something you can change your ideas so i think it was only having seen the first couple of episodes that johan directed that i think michael and the other producers on board thought this character is actually we can really use this character in an effective way to teach the audience about this world and these characters and um so yeah i mean I, I'm sure that casting wasn't. We need to get this character absolutely right. <laughs> it's probably just who's willing to add their head shaved. <laughs> I was going to say, what did you think as an actor? Because first of all, I remember you know when this show, show started, vampires were the thing, right? Like nobody mm. cared about Vikings. Nobody wanted Vikings. No one had ever seen Vikings on TV. Yeah. So all of us going into it were a bit like, what? And when History Channel? Like what's going on? So. You get this audition for Vikings, but then you're not even a Viking in it. You're a monk <laughs> with a bald spot on the top of your yeah. head. So how much faith did you have? That, I mean, Athelstan is, is a much beloved character. It's so complex. It's favorite, favorite. How, how did you, did you have an inkling of what Athelstan would become? Or were you just going, eh, I've never been a monk before. Why not? Um, I, honest, I, I honestly didn't. I, 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 I um, yeah, I, I think I... It was all so overwhelming and you, you forget as well, kind of in the midst, I, w I was 22 at the time and, <clears throat> you know, less than a year out of drama school and, you know, you're, you're, you're just kind of, you don't want to admit it, but you are just treading water. Like you're, you're desperately trying to like, okay, cool. I, well, I've booked this job and let's just, I, you're terrified of just being terrible. So you're just like. Let's just not be terrible. Let's get on set and say the words in the right order. And then, you know, we'll think about <laughs> um, what comes next. And yeah, I, I, again, as well as with television, you know, you don't get to see the whole story. I think I only, I think I was only given episodes one and two. Yeah. Even by the time we started shooting. So, and I don't come in until halfway through ep, ep two. Um, so I knew nothing. It was just like. He's a priest that Ragnar captures. That that was pretty much it. But you did a bit of research, right? You went to Linda's farm when you when you found out. Yes. Yeah. I um... tell us about that because I remember that that was an amazing story. You went on your own and you kind of looked around all the ruins of Linda's farm. So, yeah, it it was amazing. I mean, um, it was so amazing. Like I, I think probably one of the only times where I've done something like that for work, and it genuinely have been extremely beneficial you know often often you try and do something like that in terms of research or and you, you kind of think well i can maybe use 10 percent of this experience or you know you read books on characters or worlds and you think ah, some of this is applicable but going to lindisfarne was so incredible because i didn't realize how far out to sea it was it's quite a way and whilst i was there i, I managed to see the tide come in and go back out and um, I remember when I arrived, people said, you know, before there was um, cars or horses and cars, you know, the monks at that time would walk out to the island and um, often they would die because the tide comes in and out so quickly. And I was kind of like, yeah, whatever, I'm, I'm going to walk back and I'll show them. And uh, like within two minutes, and it, it was probably a couple of kilometres from the shore, along this kind of, yeah, road that's built on a, a sand dune. It's, it's amazing. But within literally two or three minutes, the sea had just gone, boom, covered it. So you, you can't get access to the island, even in a car, for part of the day. And, um, and that, that was just, a, I was like, wow, okay, that really was a very remote place. You know, you can only get access to it at certain times of the day. And... And when you did have access, especially in those times, you'd literally have to sort of <laughs> fast walk, <laughs> sprint <Yeah. laughs> back to shore or over to the island. So, um, yeah, that was, I mean, that was amazing. I then got on set, of course, and as one of my first screen jobs, I think it was maybe the second week and Michael was on set. And um, no, it was towards the end of that first block, we shot all, all of the Lindisfarne stuff and we got on the set of Lindisfarne and I remember 22-year-old me. Um, Michael, it, do it doesn't look like Lindisfarne. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like Lindisfarne. And I, I, he just looked at me like, 
who the hell have I hired? Does he know that this is fiction? <laughs> um, yeah, but so amazing. And yeah, it, it really was helpful for that first, that first sequence. It was really kind of terror was the thing that I had to play. Yeah. This is Vicast. It's a Viking thing. <laughs> 